Hey, hello guys. Here's a 6400 that they were getting some cinders out of the cinder pit here. And look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice, Trouble? Isn't that nice? Can I get Trouble to smile? Smile. Smile for camera. Smile. <laughs> You're not going to do it, are you? Yeah, that's a good one there. So we got to pull this off. But I wanted to show you guys a couple things. I used to drink a lot of beer here in this place when I was a kid. Well, this is where we used to come and drink beer. Back then, the county didn't have it locked off. You could come out here and we'd all sit down there and build a fire and drink beer and party and have a good time. Ride motorcycles and spin donuts in our pickups and tear our shit up and yeah. Of course, they've closed it all off and anything you ever could do that was ever any fun back when you were a kid, like up there in Klamath, we used to cruise Main Street in our pickups. Oh, now, now they catch you going around there more than two times, they'll throw you in jail. Ah, uh, Marco just left here. He might make it back up here by the time I... He's got to go load some trucks or something. Come on, guys. Let's go check this view out. I got to show the... I got to show the viewers this view. Yeah. It's been quite an eventful morning. I started out at Pelican Tractor, which is the Kubota dealer. And I went out. They've got an old Michigan loader that I put a starter in and... They ran it out of fuel, and their guys there, I guess they couldn't get it running, and I went out there and pressurized the tank and pushed the fuel through it. Got it started after, well, the first time I went, the starter was locked up in it, and I said, you got to get a starter. Anyways, put a starter, got it started, took off, came clear back to McDole, and the, uh, uh, there was a hay squeeze, an old Heister hay squeeze for another customer, different customer than the Heister you guys saw. Uh oh, Mr. Popo, Mr. Popo has got a guy pulled over on the highway. Yeah, quite a view, huh? There's Highway 97, north and south. Hey guys, no, don't go off that bank. There's one of the strawberry fields all worked up down there. Let's see here. I'll give you guys even a better view yet. Anyways, so I went over there and we looked at that. And uh, <laughs> poor guy, he's been buying Napa starters. So he bought the first starter that he's had in there for like five years, went out. And he says when he pulled it out, it had one tooth missing off the, the gear on the starter. And, uh, he said, uh, uh, I went and got a starter from Napa, lifetime warranty, you know that, you know that whole thing, oh yeah, they'll, they'll give you starters all day long, but they never pay for your time to go out there and take it in and out when it don't work, and, uh, anyway, he went and put another starter in it from Napa, and it started, but it made some noise, and he pulled it back out. It Well, no, it just started zinging on him is what it did. You know, the the gear on the, the, the pinion gear on the Bendix broke clear in half. Some pop metal piece of shit gear they put on there. So then, he goes back and gets another starter. And well, he thought there was something wrong with the engine, no, and I pulled the starter out for him. I said, no, you got... Two bad starters in a row from them. I said, this one's locked up. Because when I pulled it out, the Bendix, the pinion gear was clear out on it. I hit it with a hammer and it went back in. And then I've got jumper cables hooked up to it and jumped across the signal wire. And it wouldn't do anything. So anyway, I took off. Uh, see, it's kind of hard to see. See the big red potato cellar there? That's where the shop is. And there's the valley. And there's CHP. It's got the truck pulled over. Anyway, there's the valley. And back towards the west here, it's all mountains. You get over this little mountain range here. Medicine Lake's right over in there. But you get over this little mountain range back in here. Um, and you're into the Tui Lake Basin over there. But, uh... Come on, turkeys, come on. 
Anyways, so I got that figured out through the starter on the deck plate. Come on, hey. <whistles> Come on. Let's go. Trouble? Daisy? Come on. Duke, you're the only one that listens. Trouble? Daisy? Let me go find these two knuckleheads. Come on, you two. Anyway, so we took off from there, and then Planessa Nursery, they're a big strawberry nursery. They had a... I've been kind of trying to get my foot in the door with the tractor work. They got a pile of John Deere tractors. If I can, <laughs> I've done... I fixed quite a few pickups for them, but... I'm trying to get my foot in the door on the tractor side of things with them. And anyway, I uh, had a two. Can you believe this? Had a 2015 XLT Lariat F150 with a five liter in it, of course. That sucker, 2015, already got 207,000 miles on it. Whoa, look out. Here we go. And so, went out there and looked at it. Got it started and it was rattling bad, making noise and barely would run. And I said, well, I think you probably with this many miles, I've got a suspicion you you got timing chain problems or something and it's out of time. There's something going on here and it ain't gonna be fixed in the driveway. You guys need to get it to the shop, so it'll probably be sitting there when we get back. Well, we're gonna try to knock this out, get this thing torn apart, get the parts ordered. Because the county, not the county, the Forest Service owns part of this. They share it with this ranch. And I guess the Forest Service had some equipment sitting down there last year and they left it down here and somebody came up there and vandalized it and sold half the shit and the batteries and stole the turbo, stole the damn turbo off the skid steer on it. Can you believe that shit? Anyway, Duke, come on bud. You already tired of being here? We're having fun. Let's use the tractor to get the front end off the ground. And Mark took the key with him. Why did he do that? I guess he's nervous about shit getting stolen. I guess that's why, like I just said. I have a John Deere key somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Well guys, we're piecing this planetary back together. We got basically the new Planet Gear housing hub. I've got two of them put together. I got one that I just put together. I'm letting it cool down. I got a bearing. Basically you heat your bearing. These bearings are directional. Um, there's a bottom and a top bearing. I got the bottom bearing. I'd like to show you right now, but I can't because it's probably hotter than hell already. But Anyways, the bottom bearing's got a taper on it. You'll notice that the, there's a chamfer on the bottom where it's up against the shoulder on that housing. So that, that bearing's got to go on the bottom. Trust me, I put one on there just out in the field one time and got it on there and the damn thing was, the damn thing was, uh, was on there wrong. It was upside down. Anyways, put that on and you just take your planet gear and put your planet gear on there that one's probably about ready to go and on there let's get a hold of it if not we got a hammer and a punch we can get it on there in it and that there it goes it's been a little bit of ridge right there on that shaft once I got past the snap ring here we just must have when they cut the ridge on the shaft there for the or the groove for the snap ring they must have must have uh, left a little ridge there okay uh, take a little bit of oil there and loop that bearing up Make me feel better anyway. 
anything else. All right, well, we'll let this one heat up. And then let's go ahead and throw our planet gear on that there. These aren't directional. You just got a taper cut on each end of the gear. Daisy, girl, our brand new hub here. Of course, deer couldn't put the studs in it. So we got to beat the studs out of this hub without damaging them, hopefully. Maybe. What do you think, bud? You think we ought to try to press them out? Huh? Or should we just knock them out there with a hammer and be done with it? Oh, gosh. Oh, oh, buddy. Oh, trouble. Oh, yeah, you attention freak. You're just an attention freak, aren't you, buddy? Maybe we'll just go ahead and get this done. Before I know I'll get over there and forget about that and get the bearing too hot and have to throw it away. I know me. I just kind of got to where on these smaller bearings it don't take long to heat them up. And if you have to, you can push it on on there with a air hammer or something and finish it off. But I usually wait till I see a little bit of smoke rolling off of it. Then I know it's ready. I don't see smoke rolling off of it yet. What are we gonna do, Trouble? We gotta figure out how we're gonna beat them out of there. Um, a couple blocks of wood, maybe? Is that possible, Daisy Girl? Is that possible, you? Is that possible? Is that possible, you? Easy and possible, buddy, huh? You crazy mutt. You're just a crazy kid, is what you are. He's just a crazy kid. No, oh. no oh, shit. The tripod come apart. Oh, we got smoke rolling off that bearing. We got smoke rolling off that bearing. Trouble. Let's put her on there. And just take that bearing and flop it on there. Let me get my persuader. stiff little boogers here some of the other model of ZF planetaries they had a tapered snap ring so you kind of had to watch them make sure you're getting the snap ring orientated right when you put it in the groove but these some bitches here like to pop off and they're miserable and this one here is squished together so tight you can't get the damn snap ring pliers in between the grooves on it it's a real lovely one. Yeah, this one's not going to be any fun, I can tell you what. We'll get her though. Golly! Uh... Wow, I can't believe how tight that snap ring is. Just a tight son of a gun now. Golly, now I can't get it on there. All the way, uh, hmm. The other two I did went smooth as glass, but the one I video is going to be the one that really screws with me. And voila, there we go. seated real good and don't get excited if you got a bearing heater every one of these I use my bearing heater on I gotta let them cool down before I can really turn them 
Is this one here? Yeah, see it's hard to turn right now. See this one was too. Now it's freed up. So you gotta let everything cool down or it's supposed to be before you get excited and checking some you know everything's hot and expanded so get some oil on this one luber up. Feels good now. Okay, they feel good. So, probably to finish this housing off, we don't need that turned on. Got me a new fill plug, I think, for it. There's the bolts, there's the big o-ring. Those are in the hub. I saw a plug laying here somewhere that Greg got me. I told him that we pretty much had to start over on this whole project, so did he give me the o-ring by chance? It goes around the plug. I'm not seeing that o-ring. I see some other o-rings here. What's, no, what's that? Oh, that's a snapping that goes around the sun gear shaft. I don't see that o-ring in here. Well, that just looks like an o-ring boss o-ring to me, Daisy. Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. What are you doing, gal, huh? Alright, there's an O-ring. I believe that's the right O-ring. I think that's the right O-ring, Daisy. Daisy, you're the only one that listens to me, huh? What are you chewing on? You're not chewing on my cut torch leads, are you? What do you got? Oh, I'm here. Oh, a stick. Okay. I said, God damn, he's chewing on my cut torch leads, I thought. He was laying on them, chewing on a stick. I was about ready to come unglued. That is not the thing to be doing, partner. That is the one, okay. Take it back out, make sure it didn't pinch it or something. Make sure we got the right angle ring. studs out. This is an expensive problem. All the parts, just the parts for this. Right now, for the deer, we're about 6,000 bucks. Might as well leave it loose because I'm going to be pouring oil in it anyway. So yeah, we got new planted gears, bearings, uh, new steer knuckle, Here's the old steer knuckle. See how chewed up it is? 
see where the seal right, seal right is, where the seal goes, that would never seal up again. And the inner and outer bearings go here, and that's all chewed to shit. I mean, it's just ruined. The only thing we need to take out of here is the steering stop. Pull the steering stop bolt, jam nut off. Pull it off, put it on the other hub, or knuckle. Uh, we gotta get our hub ready to go. Okay, we gotta beat studs out, babe. Let's find some blocks. Alright, where is my little... Bearing races. freezer and shrink it up a little bit. Usually you can just I've done these a million times out in the field. I don't remember them. I don't remember though changing the whole thing like this. And I have on the bigger tractors and I don't know 6400. tight of a fit that is over this hub. Oh shit, that's not good. Don't roll that over on top of that laptop. That's not good for that laptop. Yeah. See, I ain't liking that. It's a pretty tight fit. So my thought is, I was going to put that seal on. Well, that seal, can we put the seal on the hub and then... 4960 or something like that. I might know. I take the seal, put the seal in here. Let the bearing come through the seal. Okay, no problem. Okay, so now what we can do is just go ahead and turn our bearing heater on. We'll put this bearing. We'll heat it and we'll slide it on here while we're at the shop. Take a while to heat that bearing. And we'll put our seal in here. And that'll be ready to go. that. 
Okay. Hey, they make special tools for these two. I never used one in my life. I've done a bunch of these. I mean a bunch of them. Okay, so we'll slide that in there. We can put our seals, we can do a lot of things before we get out there. studs don't fit in there very tight just beating that seal in there they're trying to walk in there look at that not a piece of shit huh? hopefully when you tighten the wheel up they don't spin in there we will see Okay, what else do we got in the box of goodies here? Lots of garbage, I'll tell you that. There's my hub seal. Go ahead and throw it on there. A little looby on there. Okay. What else can we do here? We can put the knuckle seals in, can't we? Can you get me knuckle seals? I sure hope we did. I ain't seeing them though. Uh oh. Sun gear shaft. Where in the hell are my knuckle seals at? Come on, Greg. Sun gear shaft there. Just make sure there's a snap ring for the sun gear shaft. Not sure what the little lower rings here are for. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I sure hope there's somewhere some Allen Allen bolts for the hubs son of a gun I'm not behind the box or in something I'm not seeing somewhere huh that's the other bearing up there for the well son of a gun huh okay well that bearing is smoking over there so let's go ahead and Flop this over. It looks like they're screwed for our axles. Says, Wait a second, there's another John Deere box laying on the floor here, but I don't think that was what the hub was in. They're not here. We didn't get that. I got a Marco's got the invoice, so I didn't have it. Usually I'll grab the invoice and look through the list of parts and see what you know they charge you for. See if they were ordered. Especially when you're putting a million pieces together like this.
I gotta get on the phone, guys. See if they got some axle seals over there. Well, it's past five o'clock. I'll have to call them in the morning, and uh, I hope they got it. Anyway, we've got everything pretty well back together. Uh, it's all new. Everything on it's new, except for the studs and the steering stop. A new inner axle bearing, new hub inner and outer bearings, new hub seal, new O-ring. We got a new ring gear. We can't put that on until we get our. We can't get that on until we get that one seal on the axle uh, where the knuckle is there. I'll show you here. You flop that. Let's go ahead and stick these on here tomorrow because, I mean, they should have that over there. That's a pretty common thing is doing hub reseal jobs and axle seal jobs on these tractors. So I'm going to call them in the morning when they open and hopefully they got them. That one seal and the one in the axle housing too. Cause you might as well change that one while you're there and then uh we'll road it off the hill there and anyways that axle i noticed that the axle uh when i pulled the axle out of the axle housing that there was a lot of water and oil too so they're going to go down and dump that oil, but yeah, that seal goes right in here and seals the oil on the hub from coming out this way. Well, guys, um, throw the axle, I'll throw the new parts in. Let's get the scrap iron out and it'll stay here. Look at all that stuff I busted out of there the other day. Here's the broken ring gear. This is probably going to end up costing about seven or eight thousand dollars by the time it's all said and done. And it's not running them down or nothing. I mean, they're good guys, but in the winter time, what needs to happen on equipment like that is a guy needs to go in there in the winter time, and every one of them bastards he needs to check his oil on his hubs and do things just. Periodic maintenance, you know, goes a long ways, you know, and then you save yourself a lot of money in the long run. You know, you could have, you could have pulled this thing in the shop there and got a 12 pack of beer and just went through the whole tractors the whole day there and just checked all the hubs, you know. But, Crap iron now. Alright guys, I'm going to put all this stuff up. My wife's gone for the weekend. It's probably about 6 o'clock in the evening. I usually like to work in the spring and summer till about 8 or 9 at night. But I think Duke and the rest of them, no one, my better half, she left them in the house because she don't, she gets nervous. There's, there's a lot of assholes in the world, guys, and there's a lot of assholes in this part of the country that are kidnapping dogs, and these people are kidnapping dogs and putting them in dog fights, you know, making them dog bait. They're basically making them bait for these other dogs. And if I ever caught one of them bastards doing that, I'd kill them. I really would. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just a lot of shitty rotten people. And so she just gets scared to death at, about leaving them dogs out in the yard. And we, we block the dog door off to where they can't get out. And she leaves them in the house all day if she's going somewhere like this. and. So anyways, I got a feeling I got a mess to clean up when I get home. So, them poor dogs, I gotta go. We've got seven dogs, so I got two of them with me today. I tried to get Duke to go with me this morning, but see my daughter, she was going with my wife to this goat show that my wife, my daughter is enrolled in or whatever she does there. And so she, uh, she was home this morning. So Duke decided he wasn't going. So he kind of does what he wants to do, so. All right, folks, uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be making a video of putting this one back in the tractor. Well, before I head home and conclude this video, I just want to give you an update. I haven't been, I've been, I've just been buried up past my eyeballs. I've been going like a son of a gun. Still waiting on parts for that case I ate front axle. He just said stock order them, you know, because he's, he's not going to, they're not going to fume any ground. It's so damn wet out there right now. Nobody can get in the field, but these strawberry guys are all going. This is a strawberry nursery 
Ford pickup. This is a 2015 F-150 with a 5 liter in it. And where's my flashlight at? It's over here in the truck, charging. But uh, it's got a... I started on it. Uh, had a misfire on cylinder 7 and 8. It's got a broken exhaust valve spring on number 7 hole. So I got to get the... I need to get a hold of just in there and there's probably some I've got some cam tools for the modular engines you know five fours and four sixes but this looks like a different animal so I better get the cam holding tools so I don't bend the valve when I get the timing flint chain loose but I got the water pump and some of the accessories off the front I got to get the alternator loose and get the crank dampener off of there and pull the timing cover off and then then I can get the timing chain off and timing chain guides and if it, this thing's got this is a 2015 model Ford and these guys have already got um oh shit 207,000 miles I, I think I started doing a video on this so you'll probably see something on this too I get so many things and projects going I'll I'll get in the middle of one of my other videos and I've already mentioned something I did you know I, I got too many damn things too many wheel irons in the fire but hey this is what I like I'm making money so I'm making money again Here's another 2015 Ford Super Duty, 6.7 power stroke. Uh, did lots of tests before we went into it, but CP4 pump went out. Shot metal into everything and talked to my customer and we hashed it out. And I flushed the lines before I even put the pump in. And uh, anyways, we, we tried to start it. I, I could only get 200 PSI out of the original pump. And this one here, we we got 1,800 psi, and we or on them Fords, on those CP4s, you got the pressure control. There's a pre pressure control valve that's on the rail, and it kind of works like your Dodge pickups or your any of your common rail pumps that have a a, a rail relief. Only Ford made this one electric, so. Um, we checked that, we pulled that off. You're supposed to pull the, because it tees into the return line coming off the rail. And then what you do there is you unplug that, cap the, the return so when you turn the key on, because on them Super Duties, the return is pressurized, key on, engine off. If that lift pump's running, there's gonna be fuel running out that. So we capped that off and I cranked on it and there was no fuel coming out of it. So we know that that's not lifted. So what I started doing on that Ford is I did a, Pulled the uh, return lines off the left bank because it was easy, and I cranked on it, and cylinder number five and cylinder number, wait, 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 cylinder number six and cylinder number eight had a lot of fuel coming out the return. So I called my customer and talked to him and said, look, what are we going to do here? And we got, obviously got bigger problems. What happens is that flakes of metal, the flakes of metal get, shot through the rail and they wind up in the piezo stack inside the injector those are piezo stack injectors so they get up in the piezo stack and basically wedge the piezo stack open to where the fuel just goes from there right to return and it never will build enough pressure it takes 5,000 psi to make those six seven starts to start i think the the older five nines like the old fours oh fives i think I think they were like 4,000 but i think as they went into the six sevens i think they're like 5,000 psi to start too so and I got all the parts for Marco's transmission finally. We're we gotta get on this. We got a new torque converter, we got a new input shaft, got a new filter, oil, new uh transmission pump pumps over here somewhere. Got new pump uh input seal, pump gasket, pump o-ring. We gotta get that we got a lot of irons in the fire, we got a lot of shit to do. And we're gonna go home right now and let the doggies out of the house. And I got an 06 King Ranch Ford sitting at the house. The same guy that owns the hay squeeze, and the same guy that owns that F-150 over there. Um, I got to get on that F-150. He's going to give that to his daughter, and it needs a tune-up. But that's kind of low on the priority list right now. The six liter is more important. But he said it's got low oil pressure lights coming on to keep shutting down on him. And I said, man, I don't think you're... You can say what you want about them 6 O's, but the bottom end of them motors are tough, dirty bastards. They don't blow up very often. You know, uh... Well, you know what? I can turn that inverter back on there and charge the flashlight. Plug this back in. I was just kind of curious to see if this inverter would run 
1100 watt inverter would run the bearing heater and I could take it in the field with me instead of running it off the welder and uh, yeah and this is cool this inverter Bill Knight gave this to me can you believe that <laughs> people are so damn nice to me uh, but I, I just wanted to see you can switch it to volts or watts and I was kind of curious key with the truck on or with the truck off you know just sitting here uh, how many watts and how many you know how much pull down on the batteries it would do and what is that flashlight pull hardly anything <laughs> doesn't pull what 10 watts maybe yeah hardly anything 10 watts but uh, this was pulling 600 watts quite a bit about half of the capacity of that and it started drawing my damn battery down. I was watching the voltage on that. I started drawing my battery down. I don't want to grab, I'm gonna leave it right in the floor because the son of a gun is hot. I'll leave her there and let her cool down. I don't want to lay it somewhere hot like that and burn the shop down. But anyway, uh, got a lot of projects. And we're gonna go home what I got a feeling on that six liter told him over the phone I said it's just starting up and the whole pressure light don't come up and it just shuts down on you and he goes, he goes yeah I said uh, more than likely what happened is you probably you probably lost uh, rail fitting or rail o-ring or something like that